Welcome. Let's discuss Adam Rayner's life and see how he was the only person in recorded history to grow three feet after the age of 18 and go from a dwarf to a giant in his adult years. Now, out of all genetic anomalies, right, this is Adam right here next to a normal human being. We've got Ronnie Coleman, a genetic anomaly in terms of his myostatin deficiency as well his, as his muscle insertions, and even Robert Wadlow, who grew to 8 foot 11 by the age of 22, which is when he died. Out of all of these people, Adam was special because he grew so much in his adult years, even up until the age of 51. Now, by studying this case, we might be able to figure out some answers to these questions. Can growth after puberty be replicated safely? Do growth plates ever close? Some people who have watched Aesthetic Primal have seen his mega viral video about why growth plates never close. I disagree with that statement and I'll explain why later in the video. And three, why did Adam grow even after his pituitary tumor shown here was removed? Let's find out. So let's start with his life story, the beginning. I've got the year as well as his height right next to each year so you can follow along with his height growth journey visually. So in 1899, he was born in Austria. That's right underneath the Czech Republic, but right above Slovenia. He was reportedly thin and weak as a child. And if you do your own research, you'll find that his last name is spelled in various different ways. There's Rainer, there's Reiner, there's even Rainer with a Y. So if you're doing your own research, be aware of that. By 1917, at the age of 18, he tried to enlist in the army and fight in World War I, but he was not allowed simply because he was too short. He stood at exactly four foot, and because this was under that four foot 10 threshold that classifies dwarves as dwarves, he couldn't join the army. This made him sad, it made him angry, it made him depressed. By 1920, so roughly three years later, he'd grown another five inches, and this is when his rapid growth spurt starts. He starts gaining 9.14 centimeters, or roughly three inches per year, for a total of 10 years. His height shoots up, right, from 1920 to 1930, from four foot five all the way up to seven foot one. This is where he makes that dwarf to giant transition. This is him as a child, and this was him in his later adult years. You can see his facial features are distorted from all the HGH being released from his pituitary. Now the second half of his life, by 1931, he was seven foot two, so he grew one more inch in that year. This was when the benign tumor on his pituitary was found, and through a really risky procedure that pretty much nobody wanted to do, most of it was removed. So there was a little bit of tumor left, and that accounts for a slow and steady HGH release that's, you know, more than the human norm for the rest of Adam Rayner's life. This helped him grow an extra six inches in these next 19 years until his death in 1950. Now his death at the height of seven foot eight was caused by an operation on his intestine. There was a perforation, must have been some sort of stomach bug or like a gut health issue, and that caused his death. He died on the table there and no autopsy was performed despite, you know, his large stature and how much of an anomaly his body was. Now let's talk about the price he paid. There's four main things that he battled with throughout, you know, this rapid growth and the later stages of his life. One, he was plagued with overall weakness. His body simply couldn't support its own weight. This was mainly due to weak bones, right? Osteoporosis, as well as scoliosis. You can see how his spine deviates in this picture right here. He can't stand up straight as a result. He also battled several diseases, which made him bedridden and this led to the surgery that killed him. Now, even if this surgery didn't get to him, his larger than normal heart, due to all that excess HGH in his system, would have gotten to him. Now, he also lost some of his facial features due to abnormal growths in both his face as well as internal organs. This is fairly common with people with acro, right, acromegaly. You usually see parts of the face that are dimorphic, right? Like the brow ridge, the size of the nose, even the jaw. 
grow larger with an excess of HGH and testosterone. So he lost his facial features. He also experienced muddy speech, partial blindness, and hearing loss. So his quality of life was greatly diminished because of this excess HGH from his pituitary. Now, don't be fooled. If you do your own research, there's a lot of clickbait and mislabeled information out there. A lot of these huge giants that are labeled as Adam, but are not Adam, are circus performers. They're people who are huge, some taller, some shorter than Adam, but they usually stand next to dwarves and showcase that huge height disparity as a circus performance. So if you see any of those out there, just be careful, they're not Adam. Now, how can we use this info to our advantage? right? We ideally want to grow taller or influence our height in some way. First, we should understand three concepts, HGH, human growth hormone. It adds new bone to the growth plates if you're still in puberty, or it aids in bone and muscle repair after puberty. If you're curious where your growth plates are, look at these little blue spots along the skeleton, mostly at the ends of the long bones, but you can see some in the wrists, the fingers, and the feet. Growth plates, what I just showed you here, they're usually on the ends of the long bones. The process is as follows. New cartilage is laid down and it gets ossified into bone and the process repeats over and over again as you grow larger and taller. Acromegaly, or just acro for short, is an excessive HGH production, typically after growth plate fusion, right? Your growth plates have closed and you still have a lot of HGH being produced in your system. This leads to thicker bones, not longer bones. Acro, which is what doctors diagnosed Adam with, right? Excessive HGH from his pituitary, even after puberty. He didn't stop growing till the day he died, which means acro doesn't explain it all. Something must have messed with his growth plates and they never closed for some reason. And that's why the excess of HGH was able to help him grow taller. So using Occam's razor, right, the idea that the simplest explanation is usually correct is that Adam's growth plates never closed. They were either partially or fully open, and he gained roughly seven inches in those last 19 years of his life. This isn't possible through bone thickening alone, right? That acro diagnosis isn't the full picture. So some anomaly must have tanked his estrogen to slow his growth plate fusion or some other mechanism kept his growth plates open. You can see a diagram here, closed versus open growth plates. Usually there's this fissure right here that indicates that you still have that growth plate. If that fissure you know, right here is closed and it's sealed off on an x-ray, then that growth plate is considered closed. So Let's discuss the idea that growth plates never close, right? I disagree with this idea, but it's a theory that a lot of people have out there. Now, if this were the case, then bodybuilders who abuse HGH would be growing taller. We'd have a lot of seven foot giants competing in the bodybuilding industry, but this doesn't seem to be the case, right? What we see instead is people with bubble guts, right? Growth of internal organs. This is usually the heart, the liver, the kidneys, etc. And in combination with other abused substances, this usually leads to an early death by multiple organ failure. No height increases, unfortunately. So some takeaways. All right, what did we learn from this case? Injecting a lot of HGH is not a post-puberty solution. This leads to acro, a short lifespan, distorted facial features, and overall a lower quality of life. And two, our growth plates do eventually close. And there's a bell curve to this, right? Not all growth plates close at the ages of 15 to 18. Some close 14, some close 25, some might even close in the late 20s. It's all, you know, it's all mixed. Some doctors are trying to reopen growth plates or just try to add bone through stem cells. So this may be a viable option in the future. I'll see what more I can dig up on this and talk about this in the future. Then the articular cartilage theory from AP, right? Aesthetic primal. I'm looking into his claims, but from what I understand, if you're injecting a lot of HGH, you should be able to grow. Unless the articular cartilage is just unresponsive to HGH, but it still serves as a growth plate, which confuses me, then the theory is possible. But I am looking into this, and at the moment, I disagree with this claim. Now, with all that said, thank you so much for hanging out. Like and sub for more. Peace.